This is going to be part two to my No Hope of Making America Great Again series. And in this video, I'm going to talk about this whole concept that many of these Donald Trump supporters have regarding making America great again. And most Americans who have this concept of making America great again are coming from the perspective of rose-colored glasses. Many of them are coming from two so-called golden age time periods in America's history. Some are coming from the so-called golden age of great America from the 1980s, from the Reagan era, and others are coming from the rose-colored area of the 1950s. But when you look at the picture of those two historical time periods from an objective perspective, you see that neither was a so-called great period. But most white males and most white females who are talking about how they want to support Trump think that they're going to go back to that so-called great period of either the 1980s or the 1950s. However, again, neither was a great period. And I'm going to talk about your 1980s first because a lot of people these days who are my age have this rose-colored view of the 1980s. They have this picture of this ideal, idyllic era, you know, where everything was so great. Yes, there were a lot of things out there that people did, like going to Saturday morning, watching Saturday morning cartoons, or going to watch these movies that people deem now as classic. However, the time period, the economy, again, was not the greatest, especially in the early 80s. The early 80s, the country was in the middle of a really bad recession when Reagan took office, and that was something that a lot of people want to deny. There were a lot of layoffs that happened in the early 80s. And a lot of our cities were not the greatest places to live. Places like your New York City, they were wastelands back in the, early in the 1980s. They were pretty much one of the most horrible places. Our, most of our big cities were riddled with crime. And places like here in New York, we had nothing but abandoned buildings, abandoned lots, um, drug addicts all over the place. But in the eyes of most people who have the rose-colored glasses on, the 1980s were a wonderful period. It was a time of bounty and prosperity. No, I lived in this time period. Um, I lived in an apartment, a one-bedroom apartment with my with my three um, other siblings at, across the street from the railroad tracks, and it was a rough time. I mean, I can tell you about seeing the blood from heroin addicts. I can tell you about seeing heroin addicts like nodding as we went home from school. I can tell you about seeing people, you know, out in the street. I can tell you about subways that pretty much broke down um, during rush hour. Because this is what happened during the 1980s. People, again, have a glamorous view of the 1980s based on what they see in movies and TV shows. Not understanding that movies and television shows, again, are fantasy. They are scripted material meant to fit within a story paradigm. Unfortunately... Most Americans are looking to live a fantasy and not understanding the reality. If you look at the reality of the 1980s, they were not a great period. And another period that a lot of people want to talk about as great is this 1950s. And most Americans, again, have a rose-colored view of your America in the 1950s. They think it is the grandest period in American history. They think it's the most beautiful period in American history. They think it's the most spectacular period in American history. However, when you start taking an objective look at the 1950s, again, it wasn't a wonderful period in American history. Yes, a lot of white males had jobs. Yes, a lot of white males had careers. But a lot of white males back then were some of the biggest simps on the planet. And they pretty much submitted and deferred to their white women who put and tried to give them this idyllic lifestyle. Some of them tried to do it based on this Leave it to Beaver. But a lot of these white guys who you saw, you know, they were struggling too. And if they, if then the whole thing is that no one wants to talk about those white guys who struggled in the 1950s. Um, white guys like your Ralph Cramden who were reflected in the honeymooners. Now, if you look at the honeymooners, a lot of people who look at that comedy, they would go, Oh, that's that's a really dark comedy. But Jackie Gleason pretty much presented the truth about a lot of life in the 1950s, because a lot of people, that's how they pretty much lived. They were struggling day to day, um, that, that they were living off this paycheck, and they, they, didn't, they didn't have a lot of money. They did, they did the best that they could. But they'll tell you that everybody was living like Leave it to Beaver. Leave it to Beaver was a fantasy, again. 
it wasn't realistic. When you compare your leave, the Beaver 1950s image of white males to images like your Jackie Gleason in The Honeymooners or your Ernest Borgnine in Marty or even your Joe Gillis in Sunset Boulevard, they present a different, a completely different picture of life for your so-called white males who were supposedly successful. If you look at the pictures of your Ralph Cramdens, um, your Marty Pallettis, or your Joe Gillises, you see guys who are pretty much struggling to make a dollar in America, but they won't tell you that. They'll tell you that Leave the Beaver was a standard when it was not the standard. Most people in the night, white people, men in the 1950s were struggling to make a living. Yes, some of them had jobs, but again, after taxes, $62 doesn't, after, after taxes, $62 doesn't turn into much, especially when you have to pay rent and you have to pay for other things like um, clothes and shoes and food. And people don't really look at it from that perspective. They don't look at it that way because you have people thinking that, oh, it was this great and grand time. People owned these really nice cars with all this chrome and all this stuff. And they, you know, went to the sock ops or they went to the drive-in. And again, those were um, treats that people had. They didn't do that every week because, again, when you're making $62 a week, $62 doesn't really go that far. $64 doesn't go that far, especially once you take the taxes out and then you have to try to maintain your budget for the rest of the um, month. And then also you had to deal with, and that's why a lot of people went out here and got stuff on credit because they were struggling to pay those bills. But a lot of people, they'll have you sitting there believing 1950s was a golden period and the 1980s again were a golden period when they were not golden periods. And there is no way to go back to those so-called golden periods um, at all because America has changed, society has changed, and there is no way you can go back when you're moving ahead. If your country is moving ahead, you cannot go back to another period in time. This is the insanity that many people have in America regarding this whole make America great again. You can't go back to a period in the past. You can only focus on building towards the future and a lot of Americans don't want to focus on the future again because most Americans love being mediocre and they don't and the reason why they love being mediocre is because they don't want to take responsibility for their own country they don't want to take the lead in their own lives they're looking for someone to be some sort of messiah that will take them to a place like many of these Negroes want to go to the promised land not understanding that if, again, if you want change, change starts with you and it starts with what you want to do in life and you have to set a course and a direction for where you want to go. And I'm looking at most Americans these days and they don't have a course that they want to set for where they want to go. A lot of them have been buying into ideas that were presented in the media like back when I was growing to school, this, you get this job and then you work and then you build something up. Or they're coming up with these ideas that you know, someone is going to give them something, not understanding that if you want something in life, you're going to have to go work for it. And the only way to move ahead, again, is for we the people, those first three words in the Constitution, to try to make the country the way we want it to be. We cannot expect someone else to do it for us. And this is the big problem, as I see it, with most Americans. Most Americans, again, don't want to do the hard work. They don't want to do the heavy lifting. They really will just settle for less, but then they'll sit there and demand that their country be great. You can't have a great country unless you're willing to step up and take yourself to the next level. That's the only way you're going to have a great country. Otherwise, you're going to have what, what you put in. Again, what, you, what work you put into something is what you're going to get. If you put exceptional work into something, you're going to get something exceptional. If you put great work into something, you're going to get something great. But if you put mediocre work into something, you're going to get something mediocre. And most Americans pretty much want to half-do things, slipshod things, um, cut corners, and be slick. But then they want to have something spectacular. And it does not work that way in the world. It does not work that way in life. And this, the, the country that you have is based on what you're willing to make efforts to put into it. And most Americans, as I, as I just said a minute ago don't want to put in that work, they don't want to push, they don't want to establish a standard for quality, and they don't want to maintain a level standard of quality.
they would rather complain and expect somebody to come in and do it for them rather than go out and do it for themselves and make things to be the standard that they want because again you have to put that work in you know if you want to get something you have to you have if you want something great you're going to have to put in great work and you're going to have to push hard and you're going to have to make sacrifices and it's going to be a lot of pain and the sad part again is most Americans don't want to go through any pain they don't want to go through any suffering they don't want to go through any sacrifice they want to be comfortable they want to be content but then they sit there and say they want to make America great again you can't get something great again for something mediocre I know I keep repeating it because I want you to get this I want you to understand you can't get great from mediocre if you settle for less you will never get the best America can be that's all I have to say for this video you can comment rate and subscribe